Hello, everyone, uh, and I want and welcome to our webinar today, Keys to Writing Contractors Like a Pro. My name is Zane Augustini. I'm CEO of CID Insurance Program, and our instructor today is going to be Teresa Cochran. Uh, our, our, a, our, she is our contractor underwriter specialist. So she's going to get a lot of great information from her today. Uh, and of course, Jacob Cole is our marketing coordinator who makes sure that everything uh, runs smoothly uh, behind the scenes. So let's get started with logistics. Everyone's going to be muted. Um, everyone pretty much knows the routine. You'll be able to hear but not speak. But your voice is important to us. So please pose your questions in the chat room at any time throughout the webinar, and then we'll stop and answer them as we go. There's going to be a short survey after the webinar, and um, we'd really appreciate it if you'd give us uh, your thoughts and answer the questions and let us know um, what kinds of webinars you'd like to see and um, us put on for you in the future. So let's start with some logistics. So. Teresa is going to be talking about how to identify types of contractors, what's the important underwriting criteria for these types of contractors, which is a big issue because uh, there's so many different types of contractors out there. Uh, and then the next stage would be recognizing what coverages are needed for those contractors. And lastly, uh, understanding how contractors are rated and what affects the premium. That's a that's a that's a really a big deal as well. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Teresa and let her take it from here. Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to be talking about um, our two types of contractors: the artisan contractors and the general contractors. I'm sure uh, most of us know what general contractors are, um, but some of you may not be familiar with the term artisan contractor. So here is a short list. Um, but definitely not an all-inclusive list of different types of artisan contractor trades. Most of these artisan contractors, um, they typically tend to specialize in one to three trades. Um, so let's say a contractor contacts you for a quote. What types of questions do you think you should be asking to not only pre-qualify them as a good account to go after, but also to understand what their business is. Uh, these are also questions that are running through my head when I'm looking over a new submission that you all send to me. Um, I'm looking to see if it's something we have, a, if my, if it's something we can write that my carriers have an appetite for. So always, what types of trades are they performing? Are they licensed? Each state is different, but in in California, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, it seems like you need to be licensed for most trades. But maybe in your state, a plumber, electrician, maybe a landscaper, they may not need to be licensed. It's really an easy thing to research online through your contractor's state licensing department to see if your client's supposed to be licensed. And if they aren't, that's probably an account you're going to want to pass on since most carriers are going to want them to be licensed. At least it's not something we would be able to help you out with. Um, if the state wants you to be licensed, then we definitely want our insured to be licensed. Another thing we need to know about is the size of their operation. Is the owner the only worker? How many owners are there? What are their annual sales and employee payroll? Do they hire subcontractors? Are those subcontractors insured? If they are not insured, some carriers may pass on the risk, and others may allow you to include those uninsured subcontractors under employee payroll. It really, it just, it varies by carrier. Um, if the subcontractors do have their own insurance and those costs are 40% or more of your client's operation, then we would definitely be looking to write them under the general contractors program rather than under the artisan contractors program. It's a misconception 
to believe that when your client has a general contractor's license, that they're going to be rated as a general contractor. Um, my markets and many others out there um, mainly rely on annual sales and subcontractor costs to determine if we are rating a risk under the artisan contractors program or under the general contractors program. A few other questions here um, that you should ask are, are they performing new construction, remodeling, or maybe both? Um, are these being performed for commercial or residential clients? You know, we have carriers for both new and remodeling, whether it be commercial or residential. But these answers are going to help you determine what markets, you know, we can go to. Also knowing if they have had prior coverage, they're a new venture, or maybe they've been operating without coverage. All of this information will help you determine if there's a market available. For instance, it's, it's really tough to find a market to write new construction track homes, condos, townhomes, concrete foundation work, uh, fire and water restoration is another one. So if they're a new venture or they've been operating without coverage, that's going to make them even harder to place. So it's pro these are probably not the best risk to go after um, because, you know, none of us, we're all busy. We're all running around. We, we really don't have time to be calling, you know, 20 to 30 wholesalers or carriers. Um, but if they have had coverage in place, there may be a market or two to go after for those hard to place risks. So the more information you can pull from your client, the better, because um, it's going to help you figure out if it's something you have a market for. And if they don't want to give you a lot of this information, it may not be worth your time. So just you know, a couple things to think about there. Um, I have put a few examples together of different types of contractors that we can go through together. The first one I have here is a smaller risk where the owner is the only worker. So he doesn't have any employees, he doesn't have any subcontractors. Uh, he's an HVAC worker. So he's installing heating and air conditioning units into new homes. He's had a lapse in coverage, uh, you know, no big deal. Um, he's, he's currently without, without insurance. Um, but he's gonna start working for a general contractor that is requiring him to get coverage. So this means that they have a contract together, the GC and your client. So it would be a great idea to get a copy of this contract. So you know exactly what coverages your client needs in addition to any additional insured endorsements that may be required. So as you're looking through these insurance requirements on the contract, you see that they need general liability coverage, standard, right? Um, with primary non-contributory wording, a waiver of segregation, completed operations endorsement, and an AI endorsement in favor of the general contractor. These special wording endorsements are pretty standard nowadays, so most carriers will be able to offer them to your client. They may even have a special contractor's bundle or extension endorsement that include these special wording endorsement endorsements. It just varies by carrier. And there may be some carriers that may not be, off, be able to offer something like a completed operations endorsement due to the client being involved in new residential construction. Um, so, of course, if you ever have questions on endorsements, please feel free to reach out to me, give me a call, send me an email to see if it's something that our markets can accommodate. Another example I have is one owner with $86,000 in employee payroll and $35,000 in insured subcontracting costs. Since the annual sales are only $250,000, we would be able to consider this risk under the Artisan Contractors Program since the sub costs are, are pretty low, you know, under that 40% threshold that most most carriers have, some are 50%. And they let us know that they don't have any prior coverage. They're offering residential kitchen and bathroom remodeling services. And we made sure 
that they listed out all the trades they are performing and noted that the plumbing work is being subcontracted out to an insured subcontractor. It's very important to list out all the trades the artists and contractors are performing because that's really going to help on the uh, when uh, wholesalers or carriers are rating the risk for you. We really need to know all the trades being performed. So it looks like they're they're just needing general liability with a blanket waiver of subrogation and a blanket AI endorsement for their clients. Not a problem. Uh, we see these risks all the time. Uh, it's very very typical. So let's switch our gears over onto the to the general contractor side of things. As I just mentioned, most carriers require general contractors to subcontract out at least 40% of the work being performed. And the questions you would want to ask your, your general contracting client are very similar to the questions we went through um, earlier in the webinar in regards to artists and contractors. How many owners are there? What are their annual sales? Subcontractor costs? Do they have any employees? Is your client licensed? Do they have the GC license? Are, they, are these subcontractors that they hire, are they licensed? Are they adding our client, the, the general contractor, as an additional insured onto their policy? Um, are they involved in new construction, remodeling, commercial or residential work? Uh, do they have prior coverage? Are they shopping around? Are they a new venture? Any lapse in coverage? Um, all of these are going to help determine what, what carriers are available to them. In a general contractor example here, uh, there's three owners, no employees, $1.5 in insured subcost, and annual sales at $3 million. So we're at the 50% threshold, so we can definitely consider them under the GC uh, program. They're involved in new residential, uh, excuse me, new and remodeling residential construction. And they're doing some um, tenant improvements on the commercial side, so some remodeling for commercial, um, commercial clients. They have a few years of coverage, which is great. And they're looking for general liability coverage with a blanket waiver of subrogation and a blanket AI endorsement for their clients. They need one million in excess liability. And they would like PPP coverage for some supplies that they have uh, stored at their warehouse and inland marine coverage for a few large pieces of equipment and miscellaneous tools that they take with them to their different job sites. It would be great to have all of these coverages with one carrier, but you're probably going to end up presenting two or three quotes in order to cover all of these exposures. And these are definitely all coverages that we can that we can help you place. Um, it's just going to be with a couple of different markets. And here are some property coverages. Uh, that you may want to offer to your artisan and general contractor clients. The contractor's equipment provides coverage for machinery, equipment, and tools, as well as mobile agricultural machinery and equipment. Some types of equipment include tractors, front end loaders, bulldozers, uh, tools, drills, miscellaneous small tools, and other equipment that is mobile. We can go up to 250000 per item, um, up to a million dollars in one schedule. We can offer 50000 for miscellaneous tools and equipment, and some coverage for rented and borrowed equipment. And on the other side here is inland marine installation coverage. Uh, this is important when your client is trying to cover machinery, equipment, and materials that are um, either kept on site or at another location close to the job site um, that may be fenced in during the course of installation, renovation, or repair. You would see this a lot in um, ground-up construction 
um, in a fenced in lot where you see all these bulldozers and, and could be, a, a, you know, framing um, supplies just kind of kept on the land there. That's when you would want the installation coverage for your client. So some important things to remember are that most contracting claims occur as a result of work performed. The con while the contractor's work is not insurable, the resulting damage of what the contracting, the, the work performed did would be covered for bodily injury and property damage. So if your client repaired something we're not going to we're not going to pay to cover that the work be fixed but whatever damage happened because of that poor work would be covered i hope that makes sense um, a couple of examples i have are uh, the client is doing some tree trimming work and uh, the limb went through the window we see we see a lot of those claims um, or a contractor clipped the water line underground um, which caused a huge flood. So we're going to cover the damage from the flood and the contractor is going to have to pay himself to fix that water line. Or let's say, um, here's a third party uh, damage example. Um, there's not a good safety barrier around whatever construction your client is performing. And you know that's a that's an easy trip and fall claim right now, uh, right there. So just a couple of, of quick examples um, to think about when you're trying to write these contractors. Are there any questions? Please remember to type in your questions. How can you how how can I get a quote from you, Teresa? You can email them over to us. We have a, a general submission email address. It's submissions at cidinsurance.com. We have a, an artisan supplemental application available on our website. If you don't have one, I can definitely work off of any um, supplemental. But our, um, our company website is cidinsurance.com. And it would be the artisan, uh, supp the contractor supplemental application that I can use either for general contractors or for artisan contractors, which is nice. So you won't have to figure out if you have an artisan or a general contractor. I'll do that for you. So you just fill out that contractor supplemental along with an Accord 125 and 126. And if they need coverage for their property, you know, their BPP, um, I'll need an Accord 140. If they need coverage, coverage for their miscellaneous, for their tools, equipment, um, anything that's mobile that's going onto the job site and not staying at their office location, we would need an Inland Marine application. Um, I believe we have one on the website. If not, I can I can always email email over, email that over to you. Excuse me. Any other uh, questions? question is the missing coverage called direct work for their faulty work uh, please explain direct work I'm not I'm not sure what they mean by direct work I would I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about the poor workmanship um, so the the, 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 the the job that they did um, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head my my head is not not with me today um they're building something uh okay they <sighs> well, let's just say for example that they're doing uh they're digging into the ground maybe putting in mm -hmm. fences something like that and they end up clipping uh you know a, a power line and shut down the power in the area um, there's going to be some liability on that contractor's part, um, and that the, so that resulting damage is what would be would be insurable. Any resulting damages, but they would be responsible for repairing their own um, work or or paying for the cost to to, to repair that work. Yes. 
that, I hope that answers your question. There's another question for you, Teresa. Are policies issued with admitted carriers or not admitted? Mm, typically, it's going to be not admitted. I do have some admitted carriers, um, but you really have to jump through hoops to get a quote through them. Um, you know, you're going to need at least three to five years lost runs. Um, it's really going to have to fit a box. So I would say 95% of what I'm writing is going to be on the non-admitted side. But non-admitted is not a uh, not a dirty word. So um, there nope. there are some great reasons why carriers keep it in a non-admitted status. Absolutely. If you want to get a lot of those endorsements, um, the admitted markets may be shying away um, from you know something like a completed operations type of endorsement. Excellent. And One right now question. the market is tight. Sorry, the market's tightened up so much um, that you know a lot of a lot of these guys are going to be coming over to the non-admitted side anyhow. Good point. Another question: Can CID assist with bonding for general contractor union tradesmen? Gotcha. We actually, um, I personally don't write any bonds. Um, my coworker Michelle, she writes um, a lot of bonds through Hartford, so she may be an outlet for you. Um, but you can definitely reach out to us if, if you're looking to get a contract response. We can look into that. As well as workers' comp. Um, my coworker, Darby, writes workers' comp, so she would be a great person to reach out to if you're looking for workers' comp for your artisan or general contractor. And one more. Can you buy faulty workmanship coverage that covers fixing their faulty work? Um, I want to say at one time, uh, Allied, who is now going by Nationwide, I believe they used to do that. I don't know that, that that's still a thing, um, but that's typically not going to be a coverage you're going you're gonna to be able to find. I think that's true. So uh, I think that was our last question, and please send more questions if you uh, if you have if you if you have a question, please send it over. Even if we close out from here, we will get to make sure your question gets answered. I want to thank you all for joining us. Teresa loved the information that you provided. It was very valuable, uh, and I hope it was valuable to everyone who attended today. Um, we have a great website that has lots of great broker tools, lots of educational uh, uh, tools for you. We have. Uh, all kinds of templates for you. We've designed everything to make your job easier as a broker. So check out our website. Um, you'll also find recorded webinars. This Today's webinar will be recorded there. Uh, and then you can see what's coming up. But we've got hundreds of webinars that have been, uh, that have been recorded and, and that you can actually uh, watch at any time and, and pass it on in, into your office and have other people watch. Um, and the webinars are a, a lot on different classes of business and the coverages they need. And then some of them are just basic on coverages, such as employment practices, um, you know, uh, and, uh, 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 and other types of uh, coverages needed by um, businesses. So um, Teresa is at Teresa at CIDinsurance.com. You can reach her at the phone number on the on the page. She's very responsive, and um, will answer any questions that you have and hold your hand through this process. So we look forward to doing business with you, and thank you to those that are already doing business with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.